This video is kindly sponsored by Keeps, but more about that later on in the video. Hey, 42 here. If we've learned anything over the last few years, it's that the world we live in is far from predictable. Of course, there are some constants. Fast food burgers don't ever look like the pictures on the menu. Toast always lands butter side down. And men named Tiny are never small. Then there's the greatest certainty of all. Death. But it turns out, not even that is totally predictable. For example, at most funerals, you don't really expect to be burying anyone other than the person in the coffin. But from Zimbabwe to Kenya to China, there have been multiple cases of people being struck and killed by lightning whilst attempting a funeral. Suddenly, instead of just mourning one person, seven other people who you cared for are gone. That would be a shocking experience for anyone. But you still wouldn't be nearly as surprised as the 2,000 mourners who are said to have perished at one particular burial. In this case, though, the blame couldn't be laid at the feet of Mother Nature. Instead, it was all thanks to instructions from the deceased himself, who commanded that everyone attending his funeral be slain. I'm guessing they didn't put that on the invitation. The year was 1227, and the man orchestrating mass murder from beyond the grave was Genghis Khan, warrior ruler of the Mongol Empire. Now, I'd like to take a moment to talk about hair loss. I've had people close to me start to lose their hair as early as their 20s, and it's always been an upsetting experience. If you're in the same boat, then you're not alone. Did you know two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? But the best thing you can do to prevent hair loss is take the initiative now and do something about it whilst you've still got hair left. I like Keeps because it makes treatment super easy by delivering your hair loss medication every three months so you can say goodbye to awkward doctor visits and waiting in pharmacy checkout lines. There's a reason that Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors, and hundreds of thousands of men trust them for their hair loss prevention medication. If you're like me, you're probably not ready to lose your hair just yet, but prevention is key. The faster you act, the faster you'll see results, and the sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. So if you're noticing that you're losing your hair, do something about it. For a limited time, go to keeps.com slash 42 or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. You see, Genghis Khan was rather keen on keeping the location of his final resting place under wraps and legend has it that the mourners at his funeral were killed to stop anyone giving the game away. For extra security, the soldiers who slaughtered the mourners were themselves murdered by yet more soldiers. It was absolute carnage. Genghis carnage. I'll see myself out. All this bloodshed had one objective, to keep the location of the Great Khan's tomb hidden at all costs. If you think that's a bit of an extreme way of going about things, remember, historians believe Genghis Khan was responsible for the deaths of about 40 million people whilst building his vast empire. In that context, 2,000 dead mourners, a handful of gravediggers, and a couple of hundred soldiers was a fairly merciful day at the office. Genghis Khan was born into a nomadic Mongolian tribe in May 1162, under the name Tamujin. It's said that he came into this world clutching a blood clot in his hand, an auspicious sign that apparently indicated he was to be a great future leader. Temujin would go on to fulfill this prophecy and then some, becoming one of the most significant and influential leaders the world has ever seen, despite many early hardships. Temujin's father, a tribal chief, was poisoned by his enemies when Temujin was just nine years old. The young boy tried to take over leadership of the tribe, but instead of claiming the title of chief, he was cast out into the wilderness, along with his mother and siblings. For years, he and his family scavenged and hunted to survive without the protection of a tribe. Then, as a teenager, Temujin was kidnapped and forced into slavery. He eventually escaped these bonds, 
going on to unify the Mongol tribes and eventually be declared Chinggis Khan, or Universal Ruler, in 1206. Genghis Khan created an empire so vast that, at its peak, it covered most of Eurasia, some 23 million square kilometers. For some perspective, the empire today would cover most, if not all, of Russia and China, as well as Hungary, Bulgaria, Poland, Kazakhstan, the Kyrgyz Republic, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Korea, Burma, Turkey, India, Iraq, and Iran. That's a pretty impressive game of risk. So, given he was such a big deal, why and how is the final resting place of the Great Khan not known? Elvis Presley was just a king, and we know where he's buried. Well, it turns out the why part wasn't particularly unique or mysterious. Being buried at an undisclosed location was a custom in Genghis Khan's tribe, so he was just following his own tradition. But the how part is a considerably more complicated story. Genghis Khan died during a campaign against the Chinese Kingdom of Western Jia, but the exact cause of his death is a matter of speculation. He may have been killed during battle, or died from a wound that he'd suffered during a fall from his horse some months before. There are also theories to suggest that he was stabbed to death by a kidnapped princess, not your typical Disney movie, is it? Whatever the cause of his demise, a mourning army brought Genghis Khan's body back to Mongolia to bury it, in all likelihood somewhere close to his birthplace. Or did they? The trouble is, this entire story is full of contradictions. For example, a competing legend says Genghis Khan wasn't brought back from China at all, and that the coffin, said to contain his body, was actually empty. The truth is, this is mostly guesswork. The first rule of Secret Burial Club is nobody talks about Secret Burial Club. And the army knew exactly how to stop tongs from wagging. The story goes that in addition to the mourners, they killed anyone and even any animal that was encountered en route to the burial site. After the burial, 1,000 horses were reportedly brought in to trample the ground, removing any trace of the grave. Other accounts go even further, describing how a river was diverted to hide the tomb. That might sound a little far-fetched, but Genghis Khan wants to use exactly this tactic to flood the capital of Western Xiar, so it isn't outside the realms of possibility. The Great Khan remains a revered figure in Mongolian culture. His image is widespread throughout the country, adorning banknotes, staring out from portraits that hang on walls, and gazing across the landscape from large statues and monuments. It's probably for this reason that most locals have respected his wishes to be left in peace. Well, that and the rumoured belief that his grave is cursed and the world will end if it's ever found. Either way, attempts to locate Genghis Khan's grave have mostly come from foreigners, and they've been at it for centuries. Most investigations have used clues in historical text to narrow down the search area. But as technology has improved, tools like satellites have been utilized to search for any man-made disturbances or anomalies that could be used to pinpoint the tomb. The National Geographic Field Project, Valley of the Khans, recruited ordinary people to hunt through satellite imagery in search of likely burial sites. 10,000 volunteers identified around 2.5 million points of interest across the Mongolian landscape. These were then whittled down by expert eyes, leaving 100 sites that were physically investigated by a team on the ground. But even though this technique has helped to solve other missing person cases with Google Earth, Genghis Khan was not destined to be one of them. The truth is, the two might never be found. Mongolia covers an area of more than 1.5 million square kilometers, and it's sparsely populated with very little infrastructure, making it difficult to mount any kind of large-scale search. 
The country is also made up of huge expanses of mountains and grasslands, where any grave is unlikely to be unearthed by accident. In order to focus a search, it makes sense to hone in on Keti province, where the Great Khan was born, and where many experts believe he's probably buried. But this small search area is almost the same size as Austria. That's like looking for a schnitzel in a haystack. Another problem tomb hunters face is that they don't really know what they're looking for. Empires come and go, and before the Mongol Empire, there was the Zhongnu Empire. Genghis Khan was said to believe these rulers were his forefathers, and even copied imagery from the dynasty in his royal designs. If the graves of Zhongnu kings give us an inkling of what the Great Khan's tomb could look like, we're searching for a timber-lined room at a depth of 20 meters, containing Genghis Khan's remains and various artifacts to be taken to the afterlife. These artifacts are expected to include treasures from across one of the greatest empires history has ever known, so you can understand why interest remains high. At the surface, above the tomb, a square of stones would identify the grave, but since Genghis Khan wasn't keen on being found, it's unlikely stone markers would have been used. Many of the clues as to the whereabouts of the burial place come from ancient texts, but these can be as conflicting as Twitter posts about Donald Trump. On one hand, we have the legend of 1,000 horses trampling earth above Great Khan's grave. That story suggests Genghis Khan is buried somewhere flat, like the plains. But in other accounts, he's buried at the top of a sacred peak known as Birkin Khaldun a part of the Kenti mountain range where he once hid from enemies and swore to return to upon his death. Later in his life, he even declared this area off limits to the general public, strengthening the idea that this is a potential location for his grave. The area was permanently guarded by soldiers with orders to kill anyone who wasn't a member of the royal family, which is how the region earned the title, the Great Taboo. As you probably know, the second Great Taboo happened in 1962, when someone first had the idea to put pineapple on pizza. These days, access to the Holy Mountain isn't much easier than it was back then. Women aren't allowed, and anyone trying to confirm whether the Great Khan is buried on the slopes of Burke and Khaldun will be disappointed. The mountain and its surroundings have been declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site the Khan Keti Strictly Protected Area, so researchers are no longer allowed to dig there. Following the pattern of wild historical inconsistency, yet another ancient record describes how court officials travelled from a mausoleum at Genghis Khan's palace to the burial site on a daily basis in order to carry out ceremonial practices for the dead. If that were true, the whole story about mourners being killed by soldiers who were in turn killed by soldiers who were killed by more soldiers, uh, and so on until nobody knew anything, would be a total fabrication. But it would also mean that the gravesite was near enough to the palace to be travelled to within a day. That's been the big hope since 2004, when a promising discovery was made that brought us closer to the truth than anything else that has come before. It wasn't quite one foot in the grave, but it was potentially one foot in the graveyard. A team of Japanese and Mongolian archaeologists unearthed what they believed to be Genghis Khan's palace, constructed around the year 1200. The remains of the structure are located on a grassland around 150 miles to the east of Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia. Porcelain found at the site was successfully dated to Genghis Khan's time, and the surrounding area fits the description recorded by a messenger from China in 1232. If, as scholars believe, the burial site would have been located somewhere near the palace, then the archaeologists may be onto something. For now. The chances of locating Genghis Khan's tomb seem relatively slim. Mongolia is simply too big. And the clues that have filtered down through history, too sparse. But one thing's for sure, if the burial site is ever discovered, it will be one of the greatest archaeological finds in history. 
Thanks for watching.